to be hard to be a decent human being wait just a minute you expect me to believe that all this misbehaving grew from one enchanted tree and helpless to fight it we should all Emmy, you're listening to Are You Okay? And from the Media Factory and the South End of Burlington, Vermont, this is 99.3 FM, WBTVLP Burlington. We're streaming online at 993WBTV.org. Super excited. I am in the booth today with, <sighs> ooh, with Ben. Um, we are going to have a conversation about some of Ben's music, what he's been up to, what he's going to get into. Um, we got an opportunity to play a show together, actually, which is how we got introduced. Um, and I am so excited to have him on the show. We've played some of his music before. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Ben Dexter, and uh, I'm a musician, singer, songwriter. Um, yeah, I mean, I met at uh, Radio Bean. We played a show together in December that was just really lovely. And um, 
yeah, I'm really happy to be here to talk about music. I put out an EP last summer called the Upstate EP. Um, that was uh, a lot of work, but I'm glad that it's like out there in the world. And now um, I've been trying to focus on translating it to a live setting, um, which I'm sure we'll get into as well. Yeah, absolutely. That show was like so quaint and like I really prefer playing in um, in like um like club lamb shop as opposed to the actual like radio bean main yeah. stage it was like so it was like a, a lounge setting or something like that it was so totally. intimate i, I love like i mean I, I like getting loud and i feel like radio bean in particular like i always go there and like i like that i can dance and go do other things but it's so special when it, it gets to be like silent yeah y- you know yeah. i've played in both sides now and the first time was on the radio being side and then yeah. our show was light club and and i was just yeah so pleased with like the vibes and, yeah and totally it was so cozy i always say like i think that radio being is special because sometimes it can be a bar where there's music and then sometimes it can be a music venue where there's a bar yes. <laughs> yeah yeah that's a great way to put it um yeah. Yeah. i want to sort of get into some of the questions i have but my show is called are you okay and uh it's called that because basically like growing up, I'd have like the saddest taste in music and my friends and family would be like, what's going on here? <laughs> Are you doing okay? Um, and I always ask all my guests coming in just to kind of like set a space, like, how are you doing today? Are you feeling okay? What's going on? Yeah, I really appreciate that. I relate to that question so much. Um, I mean, I've had people make similar comments to me. My my partner Maggie (laughs) says that all the time. Like, we have different taste in music, and um, my taste maybe leans more to the sad side. Um, Yeah, uh, today I I think I'm doing okay. Um, I I feel like it's that time of year, post holidays, January, where everyone's just like Mm -hmm. super low energy, but. (laughs) I'm trying to kind of embrace that this year and this season. Um, There's uh, this book that I really want to read. I haven't gotten to it yet, but it's called Wintering. And it's like this concept Mm. of like, you know, especially in places like Burlington and Vermont where the seasons are, you know, can be quite extreme. um, Just embracing that time and like wintering, like embracing the emotional wintering too. Yeah. And kind of just like soaking it in and, and, uh, accepting it for what it is instead totally. of fighting against it so. do you find that you write more when like I totally get sad like every year I've lived in New England my entire life like yeah. I I definitely get that sort of like if nothing else a sense of wanting to sort of like hunker down and stay in do you yeah. write more during that time or less um, it, yeah, it's hard to say. Um, I think that I think that I write more when I'm just in a melancholy mood in general. <laughs> <And> yeah. s- <laughs> sometimes that does line up with the seasons and other times it doesn't line up with the seasons. Um, I, I think that if for this winter season, I, I am trying to be a little more intentional about like being ready for those moments. Mm-hmm. I was actually just listening to an interview with uh, Damien Gerardo, who's a amazing songwriter, and um, he was talking about songwriting being, you know, he, he's not a disciplined songwriter. He doesn't, you know, like sit down and like write a song every week at the mm-hmm. same time or whatever. Um, but he said it's a little bit like being a cat owner. I don't know if you have cats. <laughs> I have two cats, and like the song is like the cat. And, um, you know, if you if you call to a dog 95 percent of the time, it's going to come to you. It's going to like be excited to see you. But a cat is like not going to listen to you. You just have to be ready when the cat wants when to it so- feels. Like yeah. It. When it feels like it. And I just resonated with that so much. I was like, that's that's my process, too, is like, yeah, I, I, I have to be ready when inspiration hits me or like when a line hits me and I have to write it down and I have to be ready to like put in the work when it comes but I can't it's really hard for me to just like summon it I think totally or to say like okay today I'm gonna write a song or I'll finish that verse today or whatever it is I I totally relate and I really like I don't know what it is about so like there are times in my life where I haven't written a song in a year and there are times in my life where I will write three songs a week and it's it's seemingly completely 
I don't know, it, it, random, maybe other than the fact I have a friend who always says, like, I've never written a song while I'm happy. <laughs> 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 like, no one's ever writing songs because they're like, I'm doing excellent. Today. Right, right, <laughs> like, yeah. They're like, you know, nothing bad is happening. And um, yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of times, like, I feel like, I mean, I mean, what 60% of all songs are probably about breakups or something. But it's like, yeah, no one, no one in like a happy, healthy relationship is like whipping out songs. Yeah. Right. Maybe there's a few out there. But, uh, Maybe. Yeah, I haven't met them. <laughs> I don't know them. <laughs> um, that's, that's awesome. Well, we want to play some of your music for sure. Um, I wonder if we can play, I was thinking we could play Upstate and then maybe you could talk a little bit about how you wrote that song and maybe we could talk more about um, how your writing has changed or stayed the same or wh- whatever it may be. Does that sound yeah. good? Or yeah. I'm sorry, I want to play North End. I lied. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we'll listen to North End and all your music is on Bandcamp, I guess we should yeah. say that. Yeah. We'll make sure that we promote it at the end and people know where they can find it. But um, you have a couple of, uh, is it two EPs and a single or? Uh, two singles and one EP. Okay, oh, got it. Right. Roger, yeah. <laughs> Roger that. Um, this is your first single that you put out. Yes, yeah, And it's, it's called North End. And we'll listen to it, and then we can kind of talk about how you wrote it, stuff like that. Does that sound good? Yeah. Cool. Five minutes tonight. I'm wondering, are we still? bottles of wine cheap whiskey we borrowed I wanted to fight I wanted to fight away the night you said give it some time give it some time give it some time it's been a hell of a week I was wondering if you'd like to meet should we order Talk about the weather I wanted to tell I wanted to tell you how I felt But it never felt right It never felt right It never felt right Right, we are back on Are You Okay? You just heard North End by Ben Dexter. That's the first single that you put out. I wonder, do you want to just explain the song? Like, how did you write it? What is it about? Yeah, so um, I wrote the song, um, I don't know how many years ago now. It was, it was a while, maybe like six or seven years ago. And um, it was, uh, at the time I was living in London, 
and um, by the flat that I was living in, um, there was a street called North End, and like most days walking to get the subway to, to go to work, I would walk down that street. We also had some friends that like lived around the area, and um, I had been living there for um, about two years, and I just felt like I was really like uh, stuck and like kind of hit a wall. Mm. You know, I I grew up in Indiana and uh, then moved to London, and it was my first like big city, you know, experience, um, which was great. Uh, but then I I like really burnt myself out I think and was just uh feeling like yeah like just feeling kind of um like I had run out of runway if that makes sense yeah uh, it it does it totally does (laughs) um and uh yeah I I felt like I had um kind of had a new experience in a really good way, mm-hmm. but also like uh, I didn't really have further to go, sure. um, or I didn't w- really want to go further. Um, so yeah, it's it just feeling kind of like this this melancholy of like I'm in this city which like everyone lo- seems to love, yeah. <laughs> everyone just like raves about it, and I do really appreciate it, um, but it it makes me feel really like lonely actually. Yeah, um, and. So yeah, I, I wrote that song, and then I, I, you know, I sat in a notebook or on my computer for like many, many years, and I decided to finally record it. Um, I think this was like, I don't know, twenty, twenty one or something, um, because I had been, you know, not doing music for so long, um, mm-hmm. not doing music in the sense of like playing shows live or recording music. Um, so this was like the song that I chose as like a. I don't know, like reintroduction mm-hmm. uh, of myself um, musically. You know, I, like in in high school and college, I was like playing in bands all the time and like pretty active. And then I pivoted and really focused on like school and like you know work and stuff like that. And I've always been writing songs, but it it wasn't a big part of my identity for yeah. I don't know a lot of my kind of young adulthood. Sure. Um, and then I just decided like I I need this to be part of me again I, yeah. you know I need this to be like a a core part of my identity and so this was my first yeah yeah reintroduction. That, that's amazing I think the feeling of um of watching people experience something and like understanding that what they're experiencing is great and also you're not experiencing it is like really universal I can think of so many times in my life where I've been like looking around being like whoa you, you guys are clear, like, that's great for you. And there's obviously, you're experiencing something and it's not there for me. And why isn't it there? Like, why is everyone having a good time except for me? Yeah. I feel like it, that's deeply relatable um, and, like, a really cool concept for, for a tune. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Tell me about how North End, is, like, differs from Upstate and, like, how how has that transition been? Yeah. Upstate it's, being the name of your EP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really good question. Yeah. Um, you know, I was just having this conversation with a friend the other day about artists we really love. And there's like um, some artists that are just like so consistent with their sound. Mm. Like they just like... Um, I don't know, like Beach House comes to mind. To- totally. <laughs> You'll never not like you could they could play anything and you would know it would be them exactly yeah and there's like so much talent and artistry in that um and then there's artists that are like constantly evolving and experimenting and changing their sound um and i also really love that and i don't really know exactly where i fall i think i'm uh, you know like a, a, a pretty curious person and and like we talked about at our show like you know going in a lot of different sonic directions is, mm-hmm. is cool um so I think with, to answer your question, I think with, with North End, um, at the time, I don't know, a lot of, uh, in college and like after those years, I was like really into a lot of, I don't know, like kind of like indie rock, lo-fi, and then like also some like bedroom pops, you know, like that kind of like lo-fi sound of, of like using a lot of reverb and, 
and sort of like washed out type uh, <laughs> melodies yeah. and stuff. Um, I'm so, laughing because relatable. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I was yeah. like, you know what the song needs? <laughs> Tons of reverb exactly. on my vocals. That'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've totally um, been there. So I think that's kind of where North End was coming from. But then, you know, I I knew that this was a solo thing. Like th- this was this was the first time that I was doing like a solo yeah. release as opposed to a band. And so um, I've always been really influenced by like. Um, Sufjan Stevens and um, that was a big part of like my growing up and so like his style of like finger picking and like very kind of like uh, soft tender vocals yeah um, was was really uh, influencing that song too I was thinking we, we were talking um off mic that I was saying that you remind me of Jose Gonzalez a lot and Sufjan Stevens was yeah. when I was in the car I was like uh, like listening to your stuff I was like oh those are like the two like definitely it t- you could see like a tree of yeah, sorts you know like spawning Jose from Gonzalez from too. that for yeah. sure so then I think with the Upstate EP um you know I, I recorded um Upstate over the course of about a year and that was like you know, I would track some and then I would do nothing for like a few months and then I would mix, <laughs> you know, feverishly for like a week and then I would get frustrated and I would like put it away for a while. Um, but I wanted to try try something a little different. I wanted like to try to like, uh, like bring my vocals a little bit more up in the mix and like not kind of like rely on uh, too much like processing and effects and um, do something that... Uh, was a little bit more produced uh, and a little less minimal, I guess. Mm. Um, and so that was a good thing and a bad thing. Like I learned a lot and like I, you know, self-produced and self-recorded everything. Um, but uh, by adding more of a production element to it, it just like took a long time and it was just like, <laughs> totally. I don't know, I was just like banging my head against the keyboard most nights to say like, is it finished or is it not finished? And yeah. I, you know, I never knew how to tell. Um, so yeah, that's the, the sonic difference is, is like, a, there's still like a through line there, but I think with upstate, I was trying to like push myself to be a little more vulnerable, yeah. um, with, um, with the songwriting and with the, the production too. Totally. Yeah. Did you record it in Burlington? Um, I actually record because it was over the course of the year, I recorded like tracked it in upstate New York, um, just, just on a, on a trip. And then um, I finished mixing it in Burlington. Nice. Uh, cool. Yeah. Um, let's listen to, we can do silent movies maybe, or uh, unless you want another one. Whatever. Well, <laughs> uh, let, let's do through the years. I mean, that's yeah, the first track. Uh, in the absolutely. EP and, um, yeah, that's my favorite song off this EP. So we'll listen to through the years and maybe one more. Um, and then we'll, we'll come back and talk a little bit more. <laughs> So unsure, so uncertain 
I flip coins for my future and pray to the moon. Call it faith, call it love, call it good for humanity. Maybe God is the searching and God is the moon. All right, that was through the years. I'm laughing because we've been talking in between the songs and I want to like save it for, <laughs> for the radio or not. Um, we should pick up our, our conversation, but first um, I want to uh, hear about through the years. And I, I asked you, I, I wanted to make sure it was okay, but I would love if you would talk about it a, a little bit, but uh, there's this line that I really like that says something like, I am old, I am young, I'm anything you want me to be. And I wonder if you could talk about it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, uh, funnily enough, we like we were just just yeah. talking off mic about like how how I got to Vermont. Um, I I wrote through the years the first time I ever was in the state of Vermont. It was Whoa. it was like um, the first time I kind of uh, I, I moved to the New England kind of East Coast area in 2019, and so it was probably you know shortly after that, just on a weekend away, and. Um, yeah, I was in this like cabin in southern Vermont and um, just kind of reflecting on like what what was next for me. And um, I think the song in general really came from a place of like a lot of people that I grew up with or like friends. Like, I don't know, some people just always seem to kind of have it figured out. Like they, they, they knew exactly what they wanted to do and, and they like went after it and they made that happen. Yeah. Um, and that's never really been me. Like uh, I, I'm, I'm constantly, I guess, second guessing myself and kind of re-examining like who am I and what do I want. Totally. And, and also like what I believe. Like um, I, I, I grew up in Indiana and grew up in a um, kind of evangelical Christian environment. Mm. And um, as I got older and like went to school and stuff and kind of reformed my beliefs and kind of like what I believe about faith and spirituality and all of that um you know I began to I guess deconstruct from that faith and and like you know no longer identify with that and then I have to reconstruct a whole worldview after that yeah and so that Whoa. like informs so much of my songwriting because it's like been a huge part of my kind of adult experience after leaving home and through the years was also a big nod to that there's there's a couple lyrics throughout the song that kind of um are referencing that like I still have friends and know people that are very much inside of that um Mm -hmm. uh, that faith and that like community and that's great for them but like I, uh, I I don't fit in that as much anymore right and so like um learning or learning to be more comfortable just like asking questions that I don't have the answer to yeah have you not to get too much into religion (laughs) at like one in the afternoon on a Saturday but um how has like 
have you been able to find spirituality after leaving religion? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I think the first song that maybe kicked off the show or maybe we were just listening to yeah. it before uh, was, was David Bazan. Yeah. Um, and uh, his album, uh, Curse Your Branches, was like so influential for me. And just his whole, you know, experience as a songwriter and someone who like also has a past with the Christian faith. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's, I think it's, still something that I'm like wrestling with and like probably always will like it was just like such a big part of my upbringing and identity like I went to like a private Christian high school like it wasn't even just church. you were you were in I was you were all it. the way in yeah I was fully <laughs> in it and and as a musician too I was like playing in the church bands yeah so I was like singing all the worship songs and like doing, doing like Christian rock stuff yeah yeah I mean sure. Christian rock there's some bangers hey, like some pretty good tunes sometimes it hits yeah like, it does yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally uh, um so you know that was like just a huge part of my community and so now like to answer your question i guess with finding spirituality i just think that like i just think my concept of like uh spirituality and god has just like gotten so much bigger and totally. that has allowed me like a lot more space to still, you know, um, find some some comfort and some like growth in it. Um, I, I definitely don't think I've like swung to the opposite side of the pendulum of like I'm an atheist yeah. and like nothing exists. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, I, I find a lot of comfort in like a lot of poetry, actually. Like I really love Mary Oliver. Cool. Um, so much and I've been reading a lot of like Ross Gay recently too and yeah just expanding my idea of like what is God and what is like yeah you know whoa spirituality. crazy <laughs> <laughs> love it thank you thanks for in- indulging in that oh, for sure. I, I um, love talking I like it you know I, it, it can be really personal but yeah. uh, I I mean I that really could be its own show it. right <laughs> I mean we could we could go on I'm sure yeah. um cool so I wonder if we can shift gears a little bit. Um, I want to talk about where you want to go. Mm-hmm. And we like first connected when we when we met about, um, you know, I, I know something I st- struggle with all the time is like where I am, where I want to go, how I can play what I want live with just myself and a guitar. Like I have been saying forever, like, you know, if I were to have a band, excellent, I don't. And so how do I, uh, like continue to grow and change and make a sound that I want to make with like the resources that I have and the capacity and stuff like that. And I, I'm curious, I mean, you know, it takes forever to put an EP out, first of all. So congrats for putting it out. And this only came out in in July. So I, uh, I can imagine that, I don't know, maybe you've been taking some time to recoup or something. Yeah. But do you have an idea of, like, like, is your sound changing even more? Like, is it evolving past where Upstate is? Do you want to do different things? Uh, like, you've been playing live. Like, what is that like? Does that, you know... Um, has is that sound like conducive or the same as what you want to record can you just talk a little bit about that yeah that was like seven questions (laughs) in one one go (laughs) pick and choose they're all all really they're all really great questions and something i've been thinking about a lot um i think after the upstate ep i was like i'm never recording anything ever again (laughs) (laughs) um that's the I don't know. I, I've don't, I'm not quite there. I'm not in that place now as much, but um, I certainly, um, you know, the next time I record something, I'm much more likely to, to seek out like a studio or like an engineer to work with because I don't know. I just like, you know, you're always your own worst critic or whatever the yeah. phrase is. And I think like I found I, I can't mix and master myself again. Like I think I'll just... Um, 
be in a bad place like <laughs> this is like such a hot take because i do know pe- like there are some people maybe who are who do mixing and math like who are engineers and that's excellent no one should mix and master no, their own like, i mean it you would have like to torture sometimes it feels like um what's the word like masochism or something yeah, like that exactly. like there's no way to not hate yourself yeah. when you're yeah. yeah as someone who like you know, edits my own audio for right. <laughs> like, it's like that to just like a elevated that times because it's yeah. a thousand. It, yeah. And I think like if you don't have a partner, like a music partner, or other people who are like doing it with you, like totally. I know I, I was saying I have a, a friend who lives in Somerville and I make all my music with him pretty much. And, um, and we're constantly like, it's like a checks and balances system i yeah. think like sometimes he'll send me something and i'll be like dude what like this sounds so different like remember what this should sound like or whatever and like vice versa or i'll go like way off on a tangent i think like having those checks and balances is great and also i've tried to <laughs> like trying to mix and master my own music like you when you're in a vacuum it's like almost impossible you know it's already impossible yeah. um independently but i totally would like if anyone were to ask me what to do i would always say like pay the money and get it mixed and master yeah, because sure. <laughs> yeah and I, w- I was just doing it in a vacuum and so like yeah even just having a friend or like collaborators yeah. it would, it would be really helpful i think after the upstate up it's like you know um i i had just moved to burlington a few months before and actually like the upstate up had been sitting on my laptop for like many many months mm. and i just decided like I think I just need to like put this out there and like set myself a deadline, however arbitrary that is, Um, because like I'm in a new city and I really like I really want music to be kind of a core part of who I am and and, like how people see me. And so um, I want to put this out there and, and then, you know, try to try to translate it live and and play more live shows, because that's like what made me fall in love with music totally. originally like when I was growing up so um yeah I guess I'm in that stage sort of of like figuring out um how to play things live and it's interesting like doing solo shows like that right like kind of depends on the venue like we were talking about Radio Bean versus yeah. like Hope Amp Shop um I think the some of the production on upstate EP is like not, you know, uh, doable solo, like Mm. to, to replicate it. So I'm trying to figure out what that looks like, but I think for where I want to go with live shows is like figure out like how to have like a, you know, whatever, six song set list or something that's just like really solid and like has, um, you know, uh, a little bit of, production to it like at at the show we played together I was like using a looping pedal to sort of like introduce some textures uh, in addition to the finger picking guitar stuff I was doing Um, and so I want to push in that direction a little bit more um, because I know I can just bring an acoustic guitar and just like play my songs and that's great too totally and like I'm sure I'll do some shows like that but for certain shows where like maybe I want to you know I don't know have a little bit more energy or a little bit more variety um I'm, I'm pushing into like how do I use an electric guitar and like fill like multiple different sonic spaces with yeah that. yeah I always like my internal struggle every time I play a show of like do I bring my electric guitar or my acoustic guitar yeah. and like I feel like when I bring my electric guitar I'm like I feel nervous that this is like gonna sound too harsh or like too hard and like I have very you know soft music and I don't want it to sound like whiny but then it's like okay am I gonna bring my acoustic guitar and then what am I a singer songwriter like I don't want yeah. that vibe either like I don't yeah, know like I, yeah. I feel like I'm constantly like what sound do I do I want or how do I want to be perceived you know yeah no I, I ask myself that question all the time <laughs> because like I don't know singer songwriter like it it's accurate like it's des- sure it's yeah. descriptive I guess but <laughs> it can have like a certain connotation totally maybe does. and I, I don't think my music always fits that connotation yeah. so I'm sure that's what every singer songwriter <laughs> yeah maybe also that show we played problems. was like a singer songwriter right. session was, like you're like, so right is so accurate branding <laughs> But I think that with like um, some of the some of the uh, shows that I'm hoping to play this year, mm. I am uh, when I was a teenager, I was like really into like um, 
like post rock and sort of like ambient shoegaze music and so a lot of like give a um, like can you give an artist that oh um uh oh my god i'm blanking on their name i really liked uh this will destroy you um and um i'm blanking on the artist's name now uh It's totally fine. <laughs> It'll come to me. That's how it goes. Um, but I, I, you know, I just like loved like a lot of like reverb delay guitars yeah, and sort totally. of like instrumental music. And so like some of that's coming back from the vault and like, I still really love some of those tones. And so like, how, how do you like incorporate that with songwriting too, which, yeah. you know, those two don't normally blend. So I think there's an interesting space to be explored there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I'll be excited to see more of that for sure. Um, I want to make sure we have time to play one more song of yours. Um, but before we do that, I want to make sure that people know where they can find you, like your music. I don't know if you do like social media stuff, but do you want to just like plug all of your music stuff? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so you could probably find the most up to date information on Instagram. My handle is um, Ben underscore Dexter underscore. Um, I have a website, Ben Dexter Music, that I don't update very frequently, <laughs> but it exists. Um, and um, as far as shows, um, the first show I'm going to be playing this year is uh, February 2nd, nice. I believe. It's at um, Spiral House Collective, which is on Church Street. And uh, I'll share more details about the time. Yeah, we'll promote it too for, cool. for sure. That's so awesome. I yeah, didn't know awesome. that. I'm stoked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's going to be like a big art gallery event and um, a couple bands playing, I think. Um, so that's the, the only one on the books for now. But, you know, I'll, I'll share things as they go. Yeah, of. awesome. We'll definitely promote it. And we'll, we'll tag your Instagram and stuff like that. So you can find it. And all your music is on Bandcamp. On Bandcamp. Yeah. Cool. Under Ben Dexter. Yes. I'm just going to say it for you. <laughs> uh, what song do you want to close out with? Um, let's do, uh, let's do the last one on the EP, What I Don't See. Okay. All right. So here is What I Don't See by Ben Dexter. Ben, thank you so much for being on REOK. I'm really excited that, um, we were able to schedule this and, and make it work and I really appreciate it and your music. Thank you. All right. Here is What I Don't See.
can't do better But you know I can't do worse My hands are severed Shun me forever I'll write your second verse I can't remember the last time you put me first I gave away something I've given before I can't relate to you when you are born And I walk away so you know I Cause it's sad to breathe 